Today is the day that I am going to be removing my boxwoods. They got boxwood blight. I've never heard of it, but it's really bad. It spreads from one boxwood to another really quickly because it's airborne. So I thought you may want to know about it if you're looking for evergreens for your garden. I'm definitely going to keep away from ever buying one boxwood again. I think I'm going to do like spruce or some other type of plant that doesn't have that virus. But I'll talk to you more about it. Let's go and get started. This has not been the greatest news. Both of my boxwoods are sick and there's no way to cure it. For what I understand, I'm not an expert, is once they have the virus, it spreads very quickly. And this one here began to get it and the sprinklers from next door, they turn them on in the morning and it gets our patio, our yard on the fence line all wet. And I think it made the disease just spread a lot even quicker. But once it got to this boxwood, it was a matter of days before it got to the other boxwood on my flower patch where I have a lot of my dahlias. So I knew it was time to probably remove them. We liked having an evergreen because it gives a little bit of privacy in the winter and a little bit of color, but we have to let it go because it can spread to other people's boxwood and it's just not good. You can see the brown spots and it just keeps spreading and spreading. I did not want to spray it with anything because this boxwood, when it gets flowers like right now, it gets so many pollinators. I, it's just full of bees in there. So I'm a little sad because the bees help pollinate my vegetable garden. And uh, I have to figure out what I'm going to do to supplement that. But I know I'll find a solution for it. But it's time to go ahead and remove it and be very careful. The disease can come with the plant when you buy it and just be dormant until it's just very wet. We've had it a couple of years that have been so, so wet. And I think the disease just good. went ahead and woke up. I had another one on that side there, like I told you, and I think both of them are going to be gone. One of the things I read is that you really have to remove all of the leaves, put them in garbage bags, and make sure that it doesn't keep spreading by placing it in a garbage bag, maybe a double garbage bag, or burning the plant before you dispose of it. decided to remove everything the root ball all the leaves everything cleaned up really well we wanted no trace of what this was make sure you take your time and remove the leaves from the ground I really cleaned up every single leaf anything that had part of that I did not want to have it in the ground I know that I don't have any other boxwoods but this is airborne and it will spread to other people's plants today the 
plant arrived that we're gonna be planting. But for now, this is the before. I loved it. I think it's gonna look really nice there because it has a soft look next to the pond and the flow of the pond and the sound instead of getting an evergreen. We got this and it's called a weeping red bud. It grows about three or four feet wide which is great. You can control it by clipping some of the branches if you don't want it that wide and it gives this beautiful pink, let's see if you can see it, pink buds from February to May. So I'm very excited we're about to plant it. I think it's gonna be a really nice addition and a great choice. It was a gift from Frank, so I can't wait to see it in the location. This boxwood was here for about four years, so the roots were everywhere. So we took our time in removing those also to make a nice space for the new plant to thrive. About a week later, week and week and a half, I think, and the plant is doing really well. I think it's gonna be perfect for this area because it falls the way it does. If it gets too wide, I can just keep clipping it to keep it a certain width. I do wanna add more of this bamboo screen and take it all the way to the end here. And I think it'll look a lot better, so that will be the next project, but I think it's perfect. It goes with the color of the plant here in the pond and it just works really well. Look at the hydrangea. So one thing I've noticed is the bees that were on that boxwood now come into this hydrangea. And if you can see, there's a lot of them which is great for pollinating all my veggies so it's worked out really good to have a lot of tomatoes going on and i'll show you what i planted on the other side On the other side, I decided not to do another evergreen either. Look at that green stalk. It is so full. I have so many tomatoes still coming out. I've been eating them, but they're like, I have a lot of them. They're really good too, super sweet. Look at that. They're just completely 
full. These tiny Tom or tiny Tim tomatoes are delicious. But on this side, I ended up doing a hibiscus. This is the Sharon. I'll put the name on the screen. But it's really beautiful, completely full of flowers. And I thought in this garden bed that's all flowers. It really complements it really well. It just looks really pretty with a cottage type feel that I really wanted to get on this spot. So I really love it. And I have a lot of things blooming right now from Dahlia, Celosia, and all sorts of things. The little daisies, really pretty yarrow. And the zinnias, look how gigantic these are. These are the apple, apple glow, I'm sorry, from Floret Farm. But I just love that rose of Sharon. It's really spectacular. The white is the right color for here, next to this beautiful David Austin rose.